with EFT, we increase the emotion resiliency so that we're we're more uh, adaptive to any kind of situation so we can feel more aligned with everything that's happening around us and we, we stay aligned and not overwhelmed. Using the breath with intention, we have an effect. So we, it's not control, but we have clearly an effect on our own health system inside. Yeah, love it. Okay, so good. So guys, everyone that's listening, practice this. Try for a week, try for two weeks. Seriously, like this is mind-blowing stuff, easy to do, has huge benefits scientifically. Okay, why not? I'm going to switch gears now, okay? And I want to talk about EFTs, uh, otherwise known as emotional freedom techniques, practices that I've been using for a long time on and off. Again, huge benefits, easy to use, right? Easy to do, but different than what we were just talking about in terms of heart coherence and the heart resonance practice. Describe to us just in general uh, what EFTs are, what the practices are, and why we should consider using them. The first exercise that we did is called heart resonance to get into heart coherence. It has an effect on our nervous system. EFT, it's called emotional freedom technique. It has an effect on our emotional system. Of course, the emotional system is going to use the nervous system. So that's why usually I'm uh, suggesting to do first the, uh, the heart resonance or to get into a heart coherence, then to use the EFT. And when we talk about emotions, it's still hard to describe. We don't know exactly how it works. But w- the way I'm looking at it, and there's, for me, it's not that simple, but almost. In the word emotion, there's the word, the word motion. It means that for me, an emotion is a state in movement. And it has to stay in movement. As long as we fix it, that's our, what we, the problem gets in. So by using this EFT, emotional state technique, we can help the emotion to continue its journey, to continue its movement, so that to get out of the system without being overwhelmed by it. Okay. Basically, so, that's so basically the, when you say, when you talk about like we don't know emotions, we don't know a lot. You're you're talking like scientifically, like from the scientific community. Okay, so so from the scientific community, emotions are still nebulous. Like you know, it's very hard to really understand what they are, right, from like probably a neurotransmitter scientific standpoint, um, how they trigger. There's a lot of different theories on emotions, of course, depending on the lens that you look at. Um, And so with EFTs, we're looking at emotions. And what I understand about them, the way that I've used them, is to allow ourselves to bring up emotions uh, and to clear them, allow them to actually be processed in our body, in our mind, so that way they can move through with motion so that way we can kind of like just be more in process. What does that do for us by doing that? Like, why is it beneficial to kind of move the emotions through? We're going to go do some practices again, guys, but I, I actually want to know like, why? Like, why should we move the emotions? Why is that a good thing? What happens when they get stuck? Like, what, what, is the, what are the reasons that we do this? Well, I'm taking some time this example. Would you like to be fixed or changed to some kind of wall or whatever and not being able to move? No. Being human is to be, it's to be emotional. It's, we live through emotions. And if we stuck it inside our body, of course we don't feel it necessarily and so on. Some people might feel it, which can be discomfort. And actually pain has a lot to do sometimes with emotion. That's why we don't understand a lot of it. There's many theories, as you said, as long as it stay, it, it's fixed, it cannot move, then it's like life. If it doesn't move, it's dead. Mm-hmm. It, cannot, it, it, it doesn't live anymore. So That's by right. just continuing its movement, it helps the emotion to go from one place to the other and to, we, we can welcome it and eventually release it and express it without being overwhelmed by it. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. And look, we, yeah. yeah. And, and look, I think most people listening kind of have a sense that, yeah, there's truth in getting our emotions out. You know, and, you know, the way I met you is through men's work, right? The men's work that I do. And for a lot of men, this is a tough one to be able to like allow the emotions to come through. It's not very masculine to, to talk about emotions or feel them or to express them. Right. And these techniques give us a simple way to be able to um, use the physical body 
to tap into and unlock and uh, unleash and process these emotions, which is why I love it. And again, the simplicity of this is that it's really easy to do. You can do it every day, no matter where you are. And it's proven to work. Okay. It's proven to work. This is scientific stuff. There's science on this now, right? HeartMath, big institute, right? That we both work with. Like they're huge right now. And their whole mission is to take research and scientists like you and actually prove these things, how they work in laboratories. Okay. So let's get into EFTs right now. Okay. Let's talk about the actual practices. I believe tapping is one of the main practices that we talk about here. Or what, why don't you share with us? Like give, give us the, the main AF, EFT that we can use here for the people listening starting today. And let's talk about how to do it. It's EFT is tapping. It's it's using tapping actually. It's just gently tapping on specific point. The creator of this technique, uh, he was using that. He was actually uh, going through a psychology uh, psychology psychology sorry uh, training, and he was trying to find a faster way to get as good results. So he's, he created the EFT by tapping on this very specific point. This point or actually acupressure point. From the traditional Chinese medicine, these points are actually where we can tap into to get the chi, the energy inside our body moving. Uh, so that's a way to get things going and to, to not be uh, stiff or still in some areas. So we're just tapping on very specific points I'm not going to go over the 14 points right now, but actually you can find them on YouTube. There's so many videos about them. To show Let, let's talk about the points though. Let's, I mean, you know, I know we, there's four, so there's 14 major acupressure points. Okay. <laughs> talk about some of the main ones. Cause when I first met you, I didn't know there was 14, there was like five or six that I was using, but so just, just give us an idea, like where these points are. And like, and like, we just kind of take our two fingers and we tap on these points. So why don't you just talk about some of them, you know, if you want, so that way we get a, some visual on it. Usually the, the ones on, on, on the on the skull and on the face are usually the one the, the main ones. We can skip a few in the in, in the thoracic cage in the chest. There's one uh, on the um, the top of the head, there's one at the base of the eyebrow here, on the corner of the eye, just below the eye and the bone here on the cheek. Mm -hmm. There's one uh, just between the nose and the upper lip, one between the down lip and the, the chin. And there's the one just below the clavicle. And when the emotion gets uh, very intense, usually we stay on this one. This is the most effective one. Just below here, we can use two, three, four fingers if needed. And we just tap as long as needed so that the, the emotion just gets down. And if we overran by it, so meaning that intensity of the emotion, if we can rate it on a scale from one to 10, for example, the emotion, the discomfort is eight out of ten. We're just tapping until it goes down and goes down and goes down. Okay. And then we we're less overwhelmed by it and we continue with, with the other points. And we call that one round and we do as many rounds as possible so that we uh, decrease the sensation. And we're really focusing, and that's the beauty of it, it's accessible because we're using body sensation. Mm -hmm. Anyone can have a body sensation, of course. Many can describe it very, very uh, clearly and uh, with a lot of definition. And sometimes oh, I feel a pressure in my chest. That's it. Okay, we're going to work with that. It can be as simple as that. As long as we're doing this and we try to characterize as much as possible the sensation, we focus on the sensation and we decrease the discomfort. And by going through this, if we... For me, the results uh, from my experience and looking at people with this experience and asking people uh, when they practice EFT with me uh, is to build again another resilience for discomfort. So we're increased at the first with heart resonance, the uh, nervous system resiliency through the heart. But we're uh, with EFT, we increase the emotion resiliency so that we're we're more uh, adaptive to any kind of situation so we can feel more aligned with everything that's happening around us and we, we stay aligned and not overwhelmed and we were, um, it's easier to go through life when we, 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 get, we stay 
in and check in and uh, in in tune with ourselves. Yeah, beautiful. That's what we're looking for. Sorry, love that. Really, really appreciate that. You know, and and again, just to, let me recap why I kind of had to do this. And I just want clarity because you know people are listening to this and they're going to want to like practice this. We're talking about these amazing benefits, mm-hmm. heart resonance um, practice. We talked about before. Super simple. I think we got how to do that. We're tapping. We're just taking a couple of our fingers. And we're kind of tapping on these points that you described. And again, people can find these points if they're not watching on video, right? Um, And they can find these points on YouTube or Googling it. And you're just tapping for a couple seconds and you're going around to the different points and you're doing a cycle, basically. And so how often do you do this? Do you just do it when you're feeling stressed or do you make it a practice? And then for how long do you do each session for? Just so we have an (laughs) idea of like what's, you know, best practice. Well, um, the breast practice is whenever we feel we need to do it. Uh, it's to make sure that sometimes during the week, at least once, twice, or three times a week, we check in to make sure, okay, how do I feel? Do I feel, oh, no, I'm feeling good. Okay, it's fine. It was a good day. Okay, fine, I'm good. And then we go the next day, okay, something happened that was really, really bothering us and we couldn't uh, act on it because we're feeling very frustrated and we couldn't eventually express the frustration and that's where it is needed some when we're not able to express our emotion to find another uh, another time during the day to do this this technique the duration of the session it can go from five minutes to half an hour to even an hour the the main point is we go, we uh, choose a discomfort that we feel. For example, the frustration can be located anywhere in the body. We rate it on a scale from one to 10. And we go, we go through the rounds and we check in sometimes as long as we're not under, uh, we're not at three or under that, we keep continuing during the rounds. So for example, we do seven rounds. We check in, okay, how do I feel? Is the sensation that's decreased a little bit? Okay. Instead of eight, it's seven. Okay. I'm going to continue and focus on the sensation uh, again. I'm naming the sensation, how it feels inside, the intensity of it, where it's located, and so on and so on. So that, and uh, we, we keep doing rounds as long as needed. So sometimes okay. it can go very fast. Sometimes it can take a, a, a longer time. Yeah, what I found with this practice is that it's just the focus on the awareness of the sensation in the body and then and then trusting that, oh, there's reasons why this works for human beings, right? There's, there's you know, Chinese medicine, what is what, 3,000 years old? Like these acupressure points are real, you know, and now modern science is coming around saying, oh, yeah, they really are real. So we can trust that these points actually are access to kind of deeper layers in our own consciousness and our emotions. And so I'm tapping on them. I just trust that that's going to work. And then I spend three minutes, five minutes, you know, I mean, doing 10 minutes, a half hour, that sounds amazing, you know, just of tapping and I am literally moving the emotion. Now you mentioned one last thing I want to ask around this of focusing on the sensation. Like, are we focusing on what we're feeling as we're tapping or are we trying to create, oh, I want to feel better. You know, like, are we trying to visualize feeling better or is it better just to be really honest with what is present in the moment and naming that? What's fresh practice uh, for the intention that we're doing while tapping? The intention and how it was created actually is to focus really on the discomfort. It's really, it has to be the body sensation. And I'm focusing really on sensation. Does it, it's, it's not as we are or as you are, it's how you feel and, not, and how I, I feel eventually. And it, it has to, well, you can focus eventually on the positive. Oh, I want to feel better, but using this approach to me is kind of avoiding the discomfort. Why AFT? It's actually aiming. Okay, this is discomfort. I have to look at it. I don't want to. It's not uh, comfortable. It is a discomfort, but we want to look at it to uh, express it and make it go away. Because using another way for me, it's avoiding it. So we're just pushing it aside. Okay, I'm not, oh, I want to feel better. Oh yeah, I'm feeling better. But we're not looking at the problem. So it's, uh, for me, it's fleeing uh, the, the, the problem. Yeah, so that's it's why it's better to, to, to use this. And when I'm using this, I make sure that I have time ahead of me. 
I'm not using EFT, uh, a full session EFT, when I'm on the subway or between patients or, okay, I know I have at least half an hour ahead of me in case I need a half, a half an hour. Sometimes I may need five minutes, but sometimes I may need more. 